Welcome to Feast of Tabernacles. You may be seated. Certain duties are incumbent upon every celebrant. These duties include sincerity. We must be sincere about keeping the laws of Yahweh, keeping the high holy days, keeping the Feast of Tabernacles. These duties include worship of Yahweh, devotion to Yahweh, love for Yahweh, love toward Yahweh, love toward each other. These duties that the Feast of Tabernacle brings about include obedience, obedience to the will of Yahweh. These duties require us to practice the laws of Yahweh, practice what the High Holy Days require of us. It requires us to be sincere and to adhere to the laws of the Bible. So we're to be sincere about the laws of the Bible, worship according to the laws of the Bible, show devotion to the laws of the Bible, love the laws of the Bible, obey the laws of the Bible, practice the laws of the Bible, adhere to the laws of the Bible. That's where your success comes. The observers of the Feast of Tabernacle set a precedent to the entire world and transmit an inside. And what is this inside? It's a sign of the end. What is the sign of the end? That indeed Judah, you, the so-called black men of America, you are the chief ruler and are now in the process of beginning to regain your world rulership. See why your enemy is upset? He understands you're in the process. I put you in the process. You're on the road to regaining world rulership. And I never told you it would be easy. But I told you victory is guaranteed. That's a fact. Judah's rulership represents that the son of Yahweh is on the scene. The only way that Judah can be resurrected, raised up to rule, is for the son of Yahweh to be on the scene. And as you see Judah coming to the knowledge of being Yehuda, coming to the knowledge that Yahweh is our father, then you will see that this means I am resurrecting the chosen of Yahweh. That's what's going on. Resurrecting the chosen of Yahweh. Now you that are chosen to be with me as the first fruit, you already understand my job is to cut Satan's time short. You understand? Matthew 24, 22. Resurrection is a serious thing. It's not something that you sit around and dream on. It's, it requires serious thought and serious action. Matthew 24, 22. Verse 21. Read. You're getting ready to see, you're already seeing now, the worst tribulation that could ever be. Men are upset and suffering and starving and at war all over the earth. Worse now than ever in history. Great tribulation. Now you're ready to read verse 22. Read. And 
You, you understand? It's for the elect sake. Who is elect? Chosen. Now, do you read this? It says it might be shortened. Hmm? Romans 9, 28. Might be shortened? I'm not here to draw this thing out. Up in our face, balls up in our face. We've been kicked. 
people have pulled out machetes and tried to cut our arms and stuff off. They stick their dogs on us. Oh yeah, they have cursed us out. Tried to run us over with their car. Yeah, we've gone through all of that. Then I pulled us out of the streets. I just pulled us out. I pulled us home. We were so busy passing the word, whoever said we came here poor is a lie. We didn't come here poor. I always attracted the professional class from the beginning. In the beginning. What slowed me down is when you poor niggas came. Every lie that went out from here into the public went out with a poor nigga. So I won't let nobody stand up here and tell you that we came, they came here in 84, 83, 84, 85, and we were poor. That's not true. All of my followers were living in fine homes and driving fine cars and had the best of jobs. Every single one of them came to me like that. That's the only kind of people I came to. That's who was attracted to me. My true disciples have always been the best. Always have. Just like you that have come now, you're the best, that's all. And I'm here to make you better. It's true that. You can tabernacle requires all nations to travel to the place where Yahweh chooses to place his name. Where? Zechariah chapter 14, 16 through 18. I just can't rest if people say the wrong thing about us. Zechariah 14, 16 through 18. Read. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord Yahweh of hosts, and to keep the feast of and it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord Yahweh of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord Yahweh will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the peace of tabernacle. Verse 19. Read. And the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the peace of tabernacle. And all those nations that have fought against us are being gathered in the valley of Jehoshaphat for the war of Armageddon. And read verse 12 and see what's going to happen to them. Read. And it shall be the way wherewith the Lord Yahweh will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Sound like chemical warfare. Saddam Hussein got plenty of it. He told them today he's going to get Israel and uh, Americans too. And they have strike teams. You can call them terrorists, you can call them whatever you want. They got them set. Hit devils all over there. I don't want to get you too excited again. We are. The place where Yahweh chooses to place his name is in reality the tabernacle of Yahweh in which we are all to be gathered. The tabernacle of Yahweh is where we are to place all of our resources and all of our trust. The tabernacle of Yahweh. Some of us have learned that the whole world has been deceived. And some of us know that we have eaten the bread of deception and think it's sweet, think it's good. What is the tabernacle of Yahweh? Tabernacle by definition is the receptacle for the consecrated elements of the Eucharist. 
the consecrated element of the Eucharist. How many have never heard about Eucharist? It's spelled E-U-C-H-A-R-I-S-T. Eucharist is spiritual communion of man with Yahweh. That's what Eucharist means. It means the spiritual communion of man with Yahweh. So tabernacle, I repeat, by definition is the receptacle for the consecrated element of the Eucharist. That makes the tabernacle of Yahweh something special. The tabernacle of Yahweh is therefore the repository which contains the elements for communion and communication with Yahweh. Communication is the act of imparting and obtaining ideas and thoughts between beings. Yahweh is the supreme being and all of you are beings. So communicating with Yahweh, communing with Yahweh means the obtaining of ideas and thoughts between the two of you. He doesn't need your thoughts. <laughs> Yahweh doesn't need your idea. It doesn't mean you can go in and exchange your ideas. <laughs> Yours are already corrupt. No, it doesn't mean that. It means you need some new ideas. And you need some new thoughts. How many know you need new thoughts? And new ideas. Yes. You get all of that from Yahweh. By entering through the tabernacle, we obtain the lofty thoughts and the lofty ideas of Yahweh. Just by entering through the tabernacle, that's what we obtain. Lofty thoughts of Yahweh and the lofty thoughts and the lofty ideas of Yahweh. We transcribe into our character the attributes of Yahweh's name. It becomes impossible to transcribe the attributes of Yahweh's name into your character when you are without the knowledge of Yahweh's name. So the first thing that we must do is to inculcate knowledge of Yahweh's name. We take on the attributes of Yahweh's character. That's what makes us the sons and daughters of Yahweh, is that we actually practice and take into ourselves the character of Yahweh. The tabernacle of Yahweh is equivalent to the mind of Yahweh. Feast of Tabernacles teaches us how to feast upon the tabernacle. The tabernacle of Yahweh is a place where you can feast. Do you know what a feast is? Traditionally, a feast is where there is more than you'll ever be able to eat. Hmm? More than you will ever be able to eat or drink. It's there in abundance before you, in your presence, readily at hand, easily accessible. A feast, delicious, delectable, pleasurable, great to the taste, a beautiful sensation to the taste buds, a beautiful sight to the eyes, a feast, beautiful to smell, a feast has the aroma of all kinds of spice, sweet, the bitter, the salty, the peppers and all that stuff you like. Whatever seasons you can think of that you like, that's what is present at a feast because you have all these infinite types of dishes. A 
real feet. I mean, it's so much food, you just can't get hold to it all. That's what the tabernacle of Yahweh is like. And the feast of the tabernacle, which is what we're celebrating tonight and this week, eight, seven days, is supposed to teach us that tabernacle is a place where your mind can feast on the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding that emanates from this great name, Yahweh. And all of you who sit in my classes and who have entered my school, you have to bear witness that indeed I have prepared a feast for you. And it's more than your mind can absorb. Much, much more. I give you so much you wonder how in the world can I keep coming up with more? And lo and behold, you come in my presence again and I have some, a new feast for you, a new day of wisdom. It does, it's sweet to your stomach. It causes a rejoicing to your soul. You that love the word and the wisdom of Yahweh, then when I reveal scriptures to you, it just rejoices your heart. It just makes you happy inside. You say, I can't wait till I get back to feast again. Just can't wait. Think about the tabernacle of Yahweh being the equivalent to the mind of Yahweh. You think about that. We know that the mind of Yahweh is divine. So we must study the divine attributes of Yahweh in order to enter into the tabernacle, which is mind of Yahweh, as delineated in 2 Timothy 2.15, which tells us to what? Study, show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needed not be ashamed. Rightly find the word of truth. So communion with Yahweh does not necessarily require sound. You know how you stand on the street corner and make long, loud prayers for people to look at you? Yeah, yeah, we I was taught, probably you were taught too, that you have to scream at God to be heard. Well, I'm here to tell you that communion with Yahweh does not require sound. Your very thought becomes a prayer. Mind the very thought becomes a prayer. That's the mystery of the scripture which says, before you call, I hear while you yet speaking, I will answer. Where? Isaiah 65, 24. That's a wonderful man that has the power to hear you before you call. This is coming to pass in your presence. Yahweh is a mighty one. Mighty man. Isaiah 65, 24. Read. That means Yahweh is already tuned in. He has to be close at hand to do that. See, Yahweh is not a God that is a fall. Jeremiah 23, 23. Read. Am I a God at hand, says the Lord Yahweh, and not a God afar off? That means Yahweh is closer to, to you than you ever dreamed. Yahweh is so close to you, huh? That he's tuned in to your thought, your head. He's so tuned in to every one. Just think about it. No matter how many of us there are, he's tuned in to each one of us. And before we call, what? He hears? He's so close to us that while we are yet speaking, 
He what? While we're here speaking. He was here. And before we call, before we call, that means before you utter a sound, the answer is on the way. Oh, Yahweh is wonderful. Yahweh is mighty. He is great. That's why even as we think, O oh Yahweh, let our enemies be confounded. But let not us be confounded. Let our enemies be dismayed. But let not us be dismayed. O oh Yahweh, bring up on our enemies the day of evil and destroy them with what? Double destruction. Now while we were yet speaking, it's already on the way. All we have to do is accept that. Because it's a reality. Huh? It's not going to be real, it's reality. So how many understand now, Yahweh does not require sign. Isn't it a shame the way we've been tricked? It's a blessing tonight just to find out that, that talking to Yahweh, communicating with Yahweh does not require sound. What a blessing to find that out. In order to communicate with Yahweh, you must be at one with Him. We must be purified and become at one with Yahweh before we can qualify to enter into any kind of harmonious relationship with Yahweh. The Feast of Tabernacles is thus held at the end and after day of atonement. I hope that you've enjoyed your letter and your words of instruction tonight. In the meantime, you're a witness that my spirit has cried out to Yahweh.